So do you guys actually think that RTX 50 series is for gamers? Well, think again. It's not really meant for gamers. The 5090 in particular is for AI workloads, but the rest of the lineup is not solely for gaming. It does really well in video editing, VFX, and other professional workloads. So let's go through some of the features and some of the additions that's happened in the RTX 50 series, which really helps it to become a workstation workhorse. Let's dive in. <coughs> Nvenc and Nvenc. So first up, it actually supports 4 is to 2 is to 2 chroma subsampling. Now you may ask, what is chroma subsampling? <laughs> now chroma subsampling very simply, very simply works on the assumption that your eyes can easily distinguish between brightness rather than color hues. That's the most basic funda about chroma subsampling. So basically chroma subsampling allows multiple pixels to share the chroma or hue information while keeping their own brightness or luminance information intact. So there are three main formats of chroma subsampling, 4 is to 4 is to 4, which is full chroma resolution and uncompressed. Every pixel has its unique hue and brightness data. And next up is 4 is to 2 is 2, shares chroma values between pairs of pixels horizontally, balances quality and file size. That's the best one. Next up is 4 is to 2 is to 0, shares chroma across 2 into 2 pixel blocks, smaller file sizes but risks getting artifacts in color grading or rotoscoping. This gives an almost similar image while majorly reducing file size. File size. So why does the 4 is to 2 is to 2 upgrade matter for creators? It improves workflows because when you use proxies, it hampers the quality of your output like green screen and color grading, both of which give you a blocky output if low quality videos are used. Now, since the subsampling is being handled with the media encoder, your main GPU cores are freed up to take care of other tasks, improving your edit quality. <clears throat> Next up, we have decoder and encoder upgrades. Across the board, throughout the 50 series, we see more encoders and more decoders. Talking about models specifically, the 5090 has two more than 4090, 5080 has one more than 4080, 5070Ti and 5070 has the same as 4070Ti, but newer gen. Why does it matter? Now it matters because editing multi-cam projects, now imagine four videos, four 4K videos, 10-bit color, four is to two is to two, you would notice stutters and long hours wasted through proxies just to edit smoothly. But now, with the new encoders, you can edit raw footage directly without creating proxies and even four plus simultaneous camera streams. <clears throat> and finally, hey, iske baad bhi hai bro. Fuck, bahut zyada hai bro. FP4 local generative AI bhi hai. Achha, thik hai, thik hai. Next up, we have the actual performance of the decoder and encoder. Now, NVIDIA claims that this decoder is super fast, almost four times faster than the 3090 and twice as fast, twice as fast, almost twice as fast, the 4090. Did I say 4090 both times? I said 3090, right? Now, NVIDIA did show off these features on DaVinci Resolve, but I'm pretty certain that all other softwares are going to update so that they can use these GPUs and their gains on encoding and decoding. And finally, support for generative AI on your system. Like legit, you could go to the internet, download your preferred model and start querying it like nobody's business. Now imagine chatting with your PDFs, chatting with your files and having a writing assistant right on your desktop without being connected to the internet. Heck, you could even generate images. So that's all possible thanks to RTX 50 series. We made an entire video about how to get this done earlier, but yeah, there are a lot of other use cases which these graphic cards help make faster and much more efficient. So if you'd like to know more about those use cases, you're at the right place. Do let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a specific video about a specific workplace. Yeah, thank you for watching.